Hello, everybody. My name is Amy Vipruz. I am the CEO and one of the three co-founders of Twist. And I'm very excited to talk to you about what we do at Twist. And what we do is we write DNA from scratch. And that is very exciting because DNA is truly changing the world. And uh, first, I'll start with a few uh, applications of DNA. And first is uh, to feed the world. And uh, on the left, I have uh, Teosinte, and that is a uh, wild corn. And on the right, I have a uh, modern corn. And as human, we have um, domesticated, we have engineered corn uh, to go from the left to the right. Um, but that took thousands of years, and now we can accelerate that. Uh, but in the lab, using modern DNA tools that are that are selected, and uh, we can ensure that as the population grows, uh, uh, we can feed uh, everybody. Uh, another uh, example is um, using uh, bacteria to fertilize uh, soil instead of using chemicals. So that, that, that's an example here. So again, feeding the world. Uh, another example uh, comes from yeast where uh, we can harness uh, yeast, we can engineer yeast, and instead of yeast uh, digesting sugar uh, to make alcohol and, and, um, and CO2, so basically making beer, we can change the genes of yeast um, to digest sugar to make chemicals. And so in, in the future, we'll be able, all the chemicals that we use in our daily, daily life, <clears throat> we'll, use, we'll be able to leverage yeast instead of using oil and fossil fuel. <clears throat> Another example is in the uh, medical area. Uh, we'll be we are able to we'll be able to use uh, actually our customers are right now able to use our DNA to develop uh, therapies, for instance antibodies, but even RNA therapies, T cell therapy, cell engineers, uh, engineered cells, and um, and we can also use DNA to diagnose diseases. And so it's being, uh, DNA is extremely powerful to first of all know what disease someone may have and provide a targeted uh, uh, solution. And then last but not, not least, I'll mention at the end uh, what um, uh, we can do with DNA in the area of storage. We can store data in DNA for the very long term. So digging in uh, a, a little bit more, uh, I'll touch on all of those uh, applica applications in, uh, in my next few slides. So the basis of what we do at Twist really comes from our technology. And on the left, I'm showing the 96 web plate. That is where you can synthesize 96 oligos uh, at the same time. And at Twist, we've developed a silicon chip that is the same size as the 96 web plate. But instead of making 96 oligo, oligos, we can synthesize 1 million oligos. So that's 10,000 times more. And so we've reduced the volume of uh, the chemical reaction. That means we increase the scale, we lower the cost, uh, we lower our carbon uh, emission, and then we make the DNA. And at the end, we take the DNA of the silicon chip and we ship it to different uh, uh, customers. And so in order to be able to track what we do in, in, in production, we have also built some very sophisticated software infrastructure so that you, the user, uh, you never have to worry about touching the, the silicon. You go on our e-commerce, you order what you want, and it gets shipped uh, in the mail. <clears throat> and then uh, digging a little bit deeper, the DNA synthesis <clears throat> um, start from a, so now I'm going to show you how we make one oligo. Um, on the, on the silicon chip, there is a OH group that's the starting point of the synthesis. And then the first step of the synthesis is to add a base, and that creates a P3 phosphate bond. And then we oxidize it into a P5 phosphate bond. That is the natural um, DNA backbone. But you can see the five prime end of the DNA is blocked with a DMT, and we can deblock that to regenerate an OH. So with one cycle, we start from one OH, <clears throat> but, and then we add one base, and we end with one OH group on the five prime end. And we can do that as many times as, as we need to, to build one oligo. And uh, you know, at twist now, <clears throat> we do that 300 times, we can make 300 uh, base pair oligos, and very soon uh, we are going to go beyond 300 base pair. So this one, uh, cycle, uh, we actually do that one million times on the silicon chip. 
And then from the oligos, we can assemble them into genes. <clears throat> so for instance, uh, this is a classic paper from uh, Stemmer at, uh, uh, in 1995. So, you know, it's getting a little bit old, uh, almost 30 years old, but it works. If you start uh, with about 50 oligos that are you know, about 40 base pair in length, if you, they, if you have the right sequence, they will hybridize to each other. <clears throat> and if you have the right enzyme, in this case, in this paper, it was able to make a, a 900 base pair insert. And then on the right, using a bit more oligos, this case 134. Uh, <clears throat> again, with the right sequence, the right enzyme, it was able to be the 2.7 KB insert. And so not only we can make oligos, but we can assemble those <clears throat> on the silicon chip uh, to be able to make longer pieces of DNA. And from that, we, we create all the products uh, that we have at Waste. In the next few slides, I'll touch on a few of those products. First, I start with our <clears throat> Um, synthetic uh, uh, DNA uh, syn bio products um, with uh, gene fragments and, and clonal genes. So gene fragments are double stranded DNA up to 1.8 KB uh, with adapters on. They ship very fast. They ship in at least three days uh, right now uh, with adapters off. Uh, maybe two more days, so about five days with adapters off. We also have clonal genes. And uh, uh, so that those clonal genes are your gene in your vector, deliver clonal perfect, so they are NGS sequence. And uh, right now they, they ship in about 10 days. Um, and very soon we'll have a, an option to get them in, in, in about five to five to seven days. Uh, as I mentioned, it's your gene in your vector. Uh, if you don't want to use your vector, we have at least uh, a number of vectors that are available for cloning, for expression. Uh, and of course, you can uh, send us your own vector that becomes your custom vector just for you. And uh, you will be able to choose it on our e-commerce. Um, and again, the, the idea of uh, our gene is uh, we want to make cloning obsolete. Uh, our motto is that friends don't let friends clone. And so you can get exact your gene exactly you want it. We can get, get it very fast at the best price in the industry. And then it's very scalable. You want one gene? No problem. You want 100 genes? No problem. You want 1,000 genes? No problem. You can scale up or down anytime you want. We also have oligo pools. So those are, uh, that's a tube that has uh, from a hundred oligos to a million oligos. And that's a, that those are pools there where you can have short oligos, you know, 50 base pair or less, all the way to 300 base pair and in the short uh, future, we'd have uh, 400 base pair and beyond. And, uh, and the key with those oligos is that um, the uniformity is very, very tight <laughs> as shown in the middle. And that is important as you do uh, CRISPR screen, you want a tight uh, <clears throat> distribution so that you have high dynamic range in your experiment. Um, we also have libraries. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit uh, 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 later. But uh, the, the idea of libraries is that you get one tube with many different variants and you can choose. You can say, I want single cell variant, for instance, if you are doing a saturation mutagenesis. <clears throat> or you can have a multiple side variant, for instance, if you're uh, trying to engineer a protein and you want to change the, the binding pocket of the enzyme. Or you can have uh, stretches, for instance, if you're engineering an antibody, but you may want to uh, uh, do mutagenesis on the heavy chain or the light chain or the CDR1, CDR2, CDR3. And so the, it's a very powerful uh, uh, a tool, uh, the library synthesis that, that we have. <clears throat> and then last but not least, we also have NGS tools. So if you are trying to do um, DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, methyl sequencing, uh, we have all the tools to go from the sample to the sequencers. And so we have panels that can be fixed or custom. We have all the regions for library prep. We have the, the enzymes, the buffers, the beads, the the uh, UMI, the UEDI, uh, everything you need to go from sample to uh, to sequencer. So now I'm just going to uh, uh, look into what can we do with um, our uh, uh, the tools that we provide and how we enable uh, uh, human health. 
and and the, the first the first step is to um, uh, to to share some example where our, our customers are using our tools to identify target uh, and validate target, and then in the second part, I'll talk about once you know the target, how you can develop uh, therapies. So in terms of uh, target identification, one very powerful tool is CRISPR. And so with CRISPR, you can uh, make a guide RNA and that will make one uh, edit uh, in, the, in, the, in the genome. It could be um, <clears throat> mostly can be a silencing event or it could be a replacement where you, you change um, some sequence by another sequence. But the beauty of our oligo pools is that now you can make those edits um, in high throughput. It's just not one cell that has one edit. You can have thousands, millions of cells, each having a different edit. <clears throat> and so the way it works, uh, you can design a library of, of single guide RNA. Uh, we do the oligosynthesis. Um, uh, we can do the cloning, uh, the, the PCR and cloning, or you, you do it. Then once you have that clone oligo pools, uh, you can uh, create uh, lantavirus uh, particles. Then you can infect your population of cells and follow that population from a time one to a time two, what happens over time. And by analyzing uh, uh, those time, time scales, you're able to um, see how the phenotype evolves and ultimately you're able to link phenotype with genotype and, and again our oligo pools are very powerful and so to identify targets this is a great tool <clears throat> and um, for instance in this article uh, in in the uk they were able to uh, study uh, 324 different human cancer lines and they were able to um, <clears throat> find new targets uh, that 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 uh, could be used to develop new new therapies so in that case again it's it's one guide RNA per oligos. But because we can make oligos that are 300 base pairs, then you can mix and match. It doesn't have to be one guide. It can be two guides where you can do, we can modify two different uh, <clears throat> genomic locations. And now you can see how um, <clears throat> different genes interact with each other. I'm sorry. And uh, this bit... <laughs> I'm sorry. And there's been a, a few publications um, that show the power of those multiple guide uh, CRISPR experiments. <clears throat> and so just to, to conclude that 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 part, the, the benefit of our Lego pool is that one, they are very flexible. You can have a small pond or you can have a big ocean. So you can have a hundred oligos, you can have a million oligos, you can have anything in between. And then in terms of the length, again, it's very flexible. You can have a small house, you can have a 50 base pair oligo pool, or you can have a very tall building. You can have to 300 now going to uh, 400 and beyond uh, base pair for your oligos. <clears throat> Moving on to the next topic is um, uh, how we can use those tools uh, to discover antibodies and discover drugs and, and so on. <clears throat> and so, again, the power of our uh, libraries, I mentioned it earlier, you can choose uh, the mutations that you want, but the benefit is that it's not random. It's explicit mutations. You have a very even re representation. You can choose to have a, a representation that, that is equivalent to the human repertoire, and it's fast and it's affordable. And that is because we use a silicon chip uh, to make all the mutants, we assemble them together. And so you have an amazing control in how those libraries are being designed. And as an, as an example, this is with AstraZeneca and Imperial College London, where they had an assay and they were looking um, <clears throat> to compare a library made by twist versus a library made by uh, uh, random mutagenesis. And in this case, uh, they had, uh, I think, about 165 uh, position. And uh, here you show uh, in the middle uh, the library that Twist made. All the mutants are re represented when, when we sequence it. It's very even. And then if you compare the bottom with error prone PCR, not all the variants are there. It's very um, <clears throat> um, uneven. And so as a result, with the Twist library, they found 10 improved mutants. And uh, with the uh, error prone PCR, they only found two improved mutants. So you get more mutants 
uh, when uh, the library is made uh, very evenly, very precisely. Uh, at WISP, we also have services. So uh, you can discover the antibodies yourself, but if you want us to do it, you send us your target, and we can provide you uh, is either a bio better, uh, or we can uh, we we have a great track record disc discovering antibodies for hard to drug target. And the way we do that is we have uh, custom libraries, but also in house we have a library of libraries. So we have libraries that are already designed uh, to go after GPCR or enzymes or carbohydrate or and, and we have, there's a large number of, of libraries. And in addition, once we have discovered an antibody, uh, an antibody for you, we have a service called Twist Antibody Optimization, where we can take any antibody, uh, design more sequences, make those, and then screen them. And what we find is we're able to improve the developability, either functionality, uh, expressibility, fallibility, thermal stability, and so on of any antibodies. And so when you think of Twist, um, you can think of us as your partner from discovery, optimization, preclinical pre development, and all the way to uh, clinical development. And we have a number of, of pharma partners, and that number is growing. And uh, uh, so if you have targets, we, we love to be uh, your partners. <clears throat> so now, uh, just in the last few minutes, I'll, I'll very quickly move on to something different, but also quite exciting. We can also use our DNA to store data for the very long term. And that is because our DNA is our hard drive. And, um, and the idea is that you can harness the same technology, the, the DNA synthesis, uh, to put data into a in DNA instead of putting into a hard drive. And the benefit of DNA is that it's extremely dense uh, and it lasts forever. And so um, uh, just uh, to, to set the stage, um, as, as you know, um, uh, DNA is extremely stable, but uh, there are experiments where they found a tooth of a horse uh, in Canada, that DNA was a million years old. So uh, you have no chance of having a hard drive that's a million years old. So uh, it's very permanent in terms of, of uh, 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 storage media. Uh, it's also timeless because <clears throat> in, in 20 years, in 100 years, you will always be able to sequence DNA because DNA is important to human health. <clears throat> Whereas, you know, the, the uh, <clears throat> sorry, the media of today, a hard drive um, <clears throat> may not uh, uh, be read in the future. For instance, uh, in the past, VHS tape used to be the best, but those are gone. Uh, Blu-rays used to be amazing. Who was a Blu-ray player these days, right? So, uh, whereas DNA, you'll always be able to to read DNA. Uh, thanks to PCR, at the bottom left, <clears throat> you're able to make multiple copies very quickly, very inexpensively of data. But if you think, oh, this is a data center. I need to make a copy of a data center. That's extremely expensive. But if that data center was in DNA, uh, in just one hour, one dollar, you can do PCR. And then it's extremely dense. Um, you, you, you know, if you took a data center, you could condense it in DNA in a very, very small volume. So the way it works is if you have data, zeros and ones, you can convert that to ACGT. You can synthesize it, store it when you want it. You take it sequence it, and then you get your data back. And so we've done a lot of those demonstration with many different partners, with Netflix, with UNICEF, with Microsoft, and it works all the time. And so um, soon there'll be an opportunity to store data for the long-term in DNA coming to a data center near you. So with that, you know, I'll conclude my talk. Thank you very much for um, uh, your interest. Again, we are here to serve you. So if we can help you with, with uh, genes, oligo proofs, library, NGS products, biopharma solution, or data storage, we would love to be uh, your partner. Thank you very much.